guys welcome back to my channel so apologies for my ragtag appearance but I am filming this clip on a Sunday I want to make sure I let you guys know a couple of things that are happening as well as the winner of the personal planner giveaway so I have a really great collab coming up for you guys today with the lovely Kayla Walker I think you're really going to like it but first let me announce the winner of the personal planner giveaway the winner is Elaine Buckner so congratulations Elaine personal planner is going to email you within 48 hours with your gift card so that way you can go onto their site and customize your planner and get it shipped to you for free. I also want to let you guys know of a wonderful price promotion that is going on for all of my ebooks. So for the Alpha Drive, the Order of Omega, Restitution, and Shadow Crown on Kindle, you are able to get them for $10 total. So from today, Monday, January 29th to next Monday, February 5th, you can get all of my books in ebook format for just $10 total. This price promotion is valid for the US and the UK only and this is because those are the only options that the Kindle promotion allows me to do otherwise I would do every country I possibly could but it is only valid for the US and UK so make sure you take advantage of that great deal and get all of my books for just 10 bucks I also want to let you guys know that I am offering box set pricing for the entire Alpha Drive trilogy for autographed copies so you can get all three books autographed for just $50 they will all ship together in one box so that is another great deal to take advantage of Last week, I also did announce my book tour stops for my domestic book tour for the U.S. and Canada for 2018. So I announced that on social media. In case you missed it and you're curious where I am coming this year and what dates I will be in these certain cities on book tour, make sure to go to my website at kristenmartinbooks.com. And if you scroll down, you will see an image that has all of the information with all of my tour dates and my tour stops. Okay, those are all the announcements that I have. Again, congratulations to Elaine for winning the personal planner giveaway. And let's go ahead and roll on into this week's video. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and happy Monday. So today I have the lovely Kayla Walker here with me. Hello. She provides writing, motivation, and advice on her YouTube channel. So make sure you go check her out. I will leave all of the links to her videos in the description box below. But today we are going to talk about just a very real topic. And a lot of you have asked for tips on how to start an author tube channel. And you know, there are a lot of tips out there right now that talk about, and I made an author platform channel like this, so I'm, or channel, <laughs> made an author platform video like this, where you're talking about being consistent, having a posting schedule, making good thumbnails, making sure, you know, that you're putting good content out there. The usual. The usual. You know, these are tips that are, they're very generic and they're very basic and they're good tips because they're true, but we kind of want to dive a little deeper and go a little further into just kind of like real talk, like starting an author tube channel and things that we think you should know. So the first one we wanted to talk about is this is not really a typical, I guess, thing you get into where you see all of the other people in person and you know, you're trying to network with friends or at a career or at a like a norm or like at a, a normal conference. office, right? So you know, the best way to kind of network is really to just kind of support and uplift and spread positivity. So even though you may be watching every other author tuber, really do like comment, engage, reach out, like have your presence, be known in the community. I just did a collab with someone who I reached out to because they commented on all my videos constantly and I was like, wow, this girl's really nice. So, <laughs> so just constantly make your presence known, share support, share positivity because that's what kind of cultivates that community and that is how you network when you're on the internet and you can't do it, you know, in real life. And that is how we met. Yes, that is how we met and that is how we are here today doing this collab. Just like she said, that's how we met. That's how this whole thing started is we supported each other. We were engaging with each other. We were truly empowering one another. And that's such an important thing too, especially with women is women empowering women, especially women in business, women writers, you know, just really, I don't know, uplifting and just empowering others. It's so, mm -hmm. so important, especially in the author tube community. You have to think of it as it's not a competition. Mm -hmm. It is not a competition. And that kind of brings us into the second point, which is when you do start to network and reach out to people and you're being really positive and supportive and uplifting, when you do reach out with someone 
to do a collab and we actually listened to a podcast by Kara Alwaleba called Style Your Mind. So shout out to her. It's one of her more recent episodes. It's like episode 72 or 73. But when you are going to reach out to someone to do a collaboration or to do something, the most professional way to do it is to send an email. And so a lot of the time people will get I guess direct messages or Facebook messages if they have a fan page or anything like that but really try and go out of your way to figure out their email I'm sure it's in the description of every single one of their videos at the end you know they always say link down below, <laughs> link so, down below. so if you ever have you know something really pressing maybe you want to work with them maybe you want to see if they can do any kind of Skype consultation or just create something with them whatever you want to do Make sure that your vision, your something that you've really been kind of thinking about in your head for months is not just lost in their DM and you're like, oh, they don't care about me. You know, that might not be true. They may be busy and they may not be able to do it at this time, but you'll know that's actually the case if you're in their email, but you won't know that if you're in their DMs. It's so, so true. And also just for me personally, with direct messages on Instagram. So I have a lot of people responding to Insta stories, to Snapchats, to my tweets. So I get a lot of notifications on a daily basis. So I, I don't check my direct messages daily. It may be like once a week that I'll check them, but I check my email daily. Also just more professional. It's like you took the time to reach out to me or if I'm gonna reach out to someone, I'm gonna write them an email and kind of set up a business proposal and make it professional. So when you just slide into someone's DMs, it just looks really unprofessional and it's hard to be taken seriously. That's, That's just what I was gonna opinion. say. That's <laughs> what I was gonna say. It puts you in a different category in your mind. Yes. You know what I mean? It automatically is like, you know, this person is serious and this person is not bored, <laughs> to be honest. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, this person yep. was just kind of had a little idea and this, this person says, hey, was really is really serious and ready to do something that I'm really excited about. So, And in addition to that, when you're reaching out to someone, it's important to do your research on that person. So if you're just reaching out to someone because they have a large following or a large engagement or something like that, and you're just reaching out because you're like, well, if I work with this person, then I'm gonna get like a ton of views or I'm gonna get a ton of subscribers or whatever, readers, whatever it may be. That's not really, I guess the way to go about it, like don't use people for their status. You reach out to people because you truly feel like you have a connection, you have something that you can both mutually benefit from, that you can provide valuable content. That's why we're sitting here doing this collab because we feel like this is valuable for both of our channels. And this is kind of a bonus tip, but if you're reaching out to anyone that you think has a, a similar channel size or a bigger channel size, but they're not in your target audience of what you're trying to do, it doesn't make sense. And it mm -hmm. might not be the best use of your time. Even if you are pumping out videos to your target audience, but it might not be at the pace you want, I really truly believe that that is a better use of your time than just messaging random people that have nothing to do with what you're trying to do. So the third one we came up with, I'm just gonna say because I'm a newer channel than Kristen, um, when I came onto the AuthorTube world and was trying to make writing advice videos, I noticed that there was a ton of writing advice videos that had already been done. Um, so they had all of pretty much the same titles, but on Google, were the titles that were being searched. So I said, you know, how can I come into this space with similar titles but not offend anyone? So I made sure that when I was making my videos that my content was completely different and I kind of had my own niche. I write a totally different genre, like I, I got my own things going on, but I owned my own space. See? Everybody has their own total different perspectives on how to write these scenes and can give you totally different perspectives. Just, yes, totally different perspectives and totally different tips. And the way that you can provide value is giving just your own experience of just things that have helped you and tips that have helped you. Like my morning routine is not the same as hers. You know, her night routine is not the same as mine. And that's amazing. And that's, that's how it should be. You can't, you can't always adopt someone's 
what someone's doing because it may not work for you. It's all about like for an author tuber, you have to own your perspective. You have to own your brand. You have to own who you are, own the videos you're putting out there, the advice you're giving. It has to be true to who you are. Otherwise people are going to see right through it. They're going to see right through it and they're going to see that you're doing exactly what author tuber X is doing. So you have to find, you have to do some soul searching as corny as that sounds. And you have to really find out who you are, what sort of message you want to be putting out there. And your content has to, it has to reflect that and it has mm -hmm. to be true to who you are and what you're trying to do with your channel. And I think also don't feel pressured to post videos that aren't true to you. Like even yes. though you are an author tuber, if you don't feel like posting a bunch of videos about book reviews, don't. Or if you don't feel like posting a million writing vlogs, don't. don't. Mm -hmm. Just to really stay true to you. If you wanna post vlogs, do it. If you wanna post, you know, just really, really write, you know, the videos you want to do down and then look at it and say, are all of these videos really aligned with me and what I want to shoot? Because if not, then don't do them. Like add what you want to do. If you have quirky, funny hobbies, that is what's going to get you views. I promise you. The fourth point we wanted to make when you're starting an author tube channel or even a YouTube channel in general is that comparison is the thief of joy. And we already just sort of touched on that because we went on a little bit of a rant there. <laughs> Me never. <laughs> Whoops. But comparison is truly the thief of joy. And again, staying true to who you are, staying true to your brand and making sure the videos and the content that you're putting out there is true to you and is genuine and authentic is so important, but also to not feel the pressure to do all the things. Like just because I work a full-time job and I write books in two months and I get them published in a year and a year and a half and because I'm using this certain cover designer and because I do writing advice vlogs and because I do bi-monthly goals videos doesn't mean that you have to do that too. You don't have to do any of that. You don't that doesn't have to be your schedule. That doesn't have to be your author tube channel. Now, if you try those things and they work for you and that's the content you want to share, then awesome. That is so great. Do that again, as long as it's true to you, but don't compare yourself to, and your content to what other people are doing. Again, you have to kind of stay in your own lane and just focus on you. On my channel, we filmed a video all about how Kristen actually writes her book so quickly and I know she did a video on it but it was an actual kind of like deep dive about like the psychological process and really going into it and one of the things with starting an author tube channel is if you want to keep up with writing and comparing yourself to people like Kristen and people like you know any other author tuber is you have to have some sort of time balance and sanity because if you're trying to do every single thing like every other person, you will go insane. 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 <laughs> insane. <laughs> like don't feel pressured to do all the things. And if you start to feel that pressure, then you should take a step back and under and try to understand why you're feeling that pressure. And it's probably because you're, you're not in your own lane. You're looking at what all these other people are doing and you're comparing yourself and you're judging yourself and you might be feeling like a failure and you're just, you're panicking because you're you're pressuring yourself to do all this stuff that maybe you don't really truly want to do deep down. You should only strive to be better than the person that you were yesterday. So the last one is an extremely hot topic. I'm sure it's going to get all the tweets is the new YouTube partnership program and the email that if you do have a smaller smaller channel, channel. that you got and a lot of people got because I didn't, I didn't know about this. It she brought, like, she brought this to my attention. I had no idea this was happening. It upset a lot of people. Happening. I sent her the screenshots of the tweets and was like, Kristen, there's a lot of angry people. If you don't know what it says, it's saying that you need at least a thousand subscribers in the past 12 months or a certain amount. I think it's 4,000 hours in the past 12 months. Of watch time on of your videos. Of watch time. And you need both. The biggest thing is I feel like there's a lot of mixed reviews about it and there's a lot of people really upset about it, but... The biggest thing with YouTube is to remember that if you're doing a, a writing channel, especially if it's to promote your books, that it's really to promote your books. And it's really to promote yourself as an author and cultivate a community. And that I feel like there's this huge 
belief that youtubers make an insane amount of money and there is some do there's a like a, a very threshold. small percent yeah. that do but to get to that point it it's a it's a big number like you have to be we're talking like really so, high up there honestly the amount you're losing is not it's not a lot and I know that that is not the huge reason that people are upset it's it's the principle that YouTube is kind of devaluing the small channels and I totally understand that but I don't think that it should be looked at that way I think it should be kind of reframed in the sense that remember why you started mm -hmm. remember why you're here and remember that this is a chance that small youtubers can kind of get together and say that we value each other that this is just the business side of YouTube and that they're having to do something with their advertising side and it has nothing really to do with the small youtubers that that's just something that they're doing and they're sending out a notice and unfortunately it affects us mm -hmm. but it's just a little hump and we'll get over the hump and like she said remember why you started and if you're thinking about starting an author tube channel or a YouTube channel just because you want the fame or you think you're gonna make a lot of money and it's just it's an easy way to make money it's not and i'm gonna be so blunt and just really transparent and open and honest with you guys i have almost 25,000 subscribers i have total 1.1 ish like million video views i make between 350 dollars and 500 dollars a month from my youtube channel 350 dollars to and it ranges because it depends on the month and how much watch time i'm getting and sometimes i have this influx of people that come to my channel and watch and so that's when it kind of gets into that 500 dollars range and then you know people kind of drop off or it's the holidays like or something like nanowrimo like I, I already know what months i'm going to make the most revenue off of youtube but if you think i can live off of 500 dollars, that is crazy it's crazy so I don't do YouTube for the money. I never have. I did it because I was like, this is a great opportunity to connect with people and also to cultivate a community. And also, I think it's another thing to think, how many years have you been doing YouTube? Two and a half. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it took you two and a half years to make. It took me two and a half years to make, to get to this point where I'm kind of consistently, sort of making $500 a month from YouTube. Mm -hmm. And I just, I want to put that out there and be, 100 totally percent transparent. transparent so you can understand that youtube is not about again if you want to do it for the fame or for the money first of all i don't think you should start a youtube channel if i'm being totally honest because it needs to be about something deeper that you want to connect with people or that's a good way to grow your platform your audience to cultivate a community and I think the right people will find you, your soul tribe. They're going to find you and they're going to stick with you. The thing is you don't make your money from YouTube. You make it from, it's the conversion factor because they are sent to Amazon to buy your books. They're sent to your website to buy your programs. Like if you do webinars or they're sent to your podcast or they're sent to whatever else it is you're doing, that's where the value is. That's where the revenue in the income stream is. But again, you have to create something for them to buy to buy it's not going to be from youtube and i hate that might break a lot of people's hearts and it might really just make them say oh well i don't want to start a, a youtube channel then and to those people i say that if you just wanted to be in for the money i honestly don't think your channel would really become this huge success because that's not the right mindset and to, to be honest if youtube keeps going on this path who's to say that they won't just raise yeah, who's to say it's not going to be, oh, you have to have 100,000 subscribers in order to monetize your videos. You know what? If that happens, I'm still making my videos. I wouldn't say I'm quitting AuthorTube or I'm deleting my YouTube channel. No, because it's not about that. If YouTube didn't even have the monetization feature, would you still be doing it? And I think, you know, yep. if you still would, then that's what you should be doing. So I know a lot of videos do give you kind of the generic how to set it up and the consistency the the how to set schedule. a thumbnail on canva all that good stuff but we really kind of wanted to give you what we thought in the sense of just the not so just the not so mainstream yeah like so it's like hashtag real talk this is the hashtag real talk starting an author tube especially because we've been seeing so much stuff on on twitter and it kind of makes me so sad when people say because of the new YouTube partnership thing that they're taking down their channel. Cause yeah, don't you do know, that. That's don't, sad. Don't do that because you, you know, you want, you want to 
cultivate an audience for your book you know even if it's even if it's your blog or it, you want to be a book reviewer who knows but it's good to it's good to have that and even if you don't want to post every week even if you don't want to post you know every month post every other month and just at least have some kind of a platform some kind of an outlet or hobby you know because it's it's for it's for you and it's for you to have and to grow as slow or fast as you want to and if you're someone who's thinking about taking down your author tube or youtube channel or you're someone who's on the fence and not sure whether or not to start because of this because of this then i just want you to think and and really kind of let this sink in <laughs> is that by not starting it because of this or by taking it down because of this you are just feeding into what youtube is doing that you're feeding into the devaluing if you take down your channel you're saying that you don't feel valuable enough and you are valuable enough mm -hmm. so you have to fight it and you have to again remember why you started and again ask yourself if the monetization feature wasn't there, would you still do it? Mm -hmm. You'll never know how many views you'll get You know, in the future. You'll never know how many people will read your book. You'll never know all of that stuff if you don't post, if you don't write, if you don't really just pursue all of those curiosities and passions. So those are our hashtag real talk starting an author tube channel tips. If you guys like the content of this video and especially the realness, rawness, vulnerability of this video, cause this was kind of like blunt and honest and you know, that's just, that's what we're here for. If you liked it, please give this video a thumbs up to support my channel and don't forget to hit that subscribe button on your way out and make sure to check out Kayla's channel. Again, all of her information will be linked in the description box below. And I know that I normally do my whole outro spiel, but you know, this girl and I are on a roll and this is our third video <laughs> and we're about to go film a fourth. So instead of doing my whole outro, my normal spiel, just know you could find everything you want to know about me, my books, my podcast, my website, everything in the description box below. So make sure you check that out and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Noise. So our, so, oh, my, 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 oh, a unique, okay. Never mind. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs>